Gallagher. It's time. Let's do it. Every choice has a consequence. On October 2nd, 1995, I took 23 steps. That's the distance it took me to walk to here and back. As I took those steps, I thought about my wife. I thought about my two children, Rob and Alex. I thought about my career. I thought about the home that I lived in. I thought about everything that defined who I was. As I took those 23 steps, I was Chuck Gallagher. I was a somebody in the community that I lived in. On the 23rd step, I reached out my hand because on the 23rd step, I reached out, opened the door, and on the 23rd step, when I opened the door, I reached out my hand and opened the door and opened the door, opened the door and stepped into federal prison. I became 11-642-058. What most of you in this room would define as a nobody. Every choice has a consequence. Now, I came out here in a rather unusual way, and I said every choice has a consequence. But now that I'm more comfortable, let me talk to you a bit about choices and consequences. I also understand that there typically is a question that's asked, which is, what in the world would the city of Irving ask a convicted felon to come and talk to them about ethics and integrity? I mean, you know, that doesn't necessarily always quite compute. So let me tell you what we're going to do in the time that we have together. We're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about the choices that we make, the illusions that we create, and how to truly gain success. Fair enough? Because in order to get there, there were choices that I made that I had to suffer the consequence for. And every choice has a consequence. Is we're going to talk about choices because every choice has a consequence. The thing is, you have the power to determine what the consequence is going to be. In fact, today we're going to talk about the truth about consequences and how you can release yourself from the chains that bind you so you can claim the success that truly should be yours. So let me do this. Because to put this in a frame of reference for a meeting that we're having today when we're talking about choices and consequences and ethical behavior. One of the things we learned was the power of leverage. Okay? And, and one of the things that came out of the power of leverage was something like this. Let me see if I can get this right. I, I kind of remember one of the instructors going through this. You buy the most expensive house that you can barely afford. 
Because as time goes on, once you have the, the, the job, of course, that's the way you're going to qualify to be able to buy the house that you can barely afford. Once you have that job, two things should take place. One, if you're doing a good job, your income should rise, right? Secondly, if you continue to make your house payments in a timely manner, that's a good thing to do, then eventually what happens is you start paying more toward the principal, which means the debt on the house goes down while your income is rising and the divergence between the two means you have more equity. And if you have more equity, you have more ability to uh, borrow money to buy more stuff because he or she who has more stuff is more important. Now, I know that everybody doesn't buy into that, but you'd be surprised how many who do. The bigger the house, the flashier the car, the cooler the clothes, the neater the watch, the fancier the shoes, all of those things are things that people will judge your level of success, your level of importance, your level of somebodiness. And I bought into it hook, line, and sinker. It's true across the board for most anything that is unethical. There are three components. And I need you to see what those three components are. Number one, the first component is need. I needed money. There was need. Today you can see that exemplified in many, many cases. People get calls from their credit card companies. The credit card company has reduced the credit line that's available. You were expecting to use that to pay the college education. You're behind on the house payment. The house has gone down in value and you're sitting there thinking, man, not only do we have no equity, we got negative equity. We are upside down. What's going to take place here? We're behind in the house payment. The wife gets laid off. The husband gets laid off. Now all of a sudden the income stream isn't there. There is need all around. And when you once find out you can do something wrong and get by with it and nobody knows, you're probably going to do it again. Recently, I was a senior vice president of sales and marketing in a publicly traded company. I know that's a little odd for a convicted felon to be a senior VP in a public company, but every choice has a consequence. Good choices yield positive results. Is it providence that a person who creates the largest Ponzi scheme in the United States' last name is Madoff? Would you invest your money with someone whose last name is Madoff? Because I heard the statement, Charles Ponzi created the scheme, but Bernie made off with all the money. I'm like, dude, what a great line that is. But when it took place, there is a point at which you can get so caught up in your own illusion that you begin to believe that what you know is wrong is okay or is right. You want what's best for your company, and your employees. As a business executive, author, and speaker, I'm putting the pieces together. I share straight talk about ethics, corporate social responsibility, choices, and success.